sort of a coming out party now that everything is official. Um, and so congratulations. And I love the, uh, I love the gear. I said to Michelle and, and colleagues, you know, I woke up this morning at 530 thinking I should have worn a Levi's jacket today. And of course, I didn't need to think of that because she and her team thought of it. So, so you think of everything, including pockets on the inside of the jacket. So, we got we're, everything. We're thinking that he's going to look really good in Levi's all week long. All week right? long. All so, week long. Yes. So, um, Michelle, thank you for being here and congratulations. Um, Thanks, Matt. And I just want to say it's just uh, it's a thrill to be back here. Um, the events over the last couple of days, seeing so many familiar faces, and uh, just love taking the stage with you to talk about Levi's. Well, this is a, this is a great a great way to have the coming out party and celebrate. So, so it's been a transition yeah. for you at Levi's, um, and you've had a long career uh, in retail and consumer facing businesses. You and Chip Berg, uh, the outgoing CEO, longtime CEO, uh, led, who led the IPO uh, of the company and, and worked very diligently and successfully to restore the brand uh, and thinks of himself and speaks of himself as a brand guy and you as a retail uh, person. So can you just give us a little scene setting on how the last couple of years have been, your decision to come in, uh, why you decided to leave Kohl's, you're already leading a very large, successful, complicated enterprise, and you say, I'm gonna uh, make a move, go work with Chip and the team. What did you see about Levi's? What did you think you could do? Great, no, it's a great question. There's a lot inside of that question. Um, you know, first, I guess what I would say is, when you get a call from someone like Chip, who I've known for more than a decade, and when it's Levi's, one of the most global, iconic brands in the world, you take the call, and that was that was just um, you know a little over a year ago. So it was fall of 2022. And to your point, to set context, I guess for the audience, um, Chip and I have been in a CEO transition process for about a year. It'll be officially 13 months when I take over. So my first official day is January 29th. So we're just close. a couple weeks away. We're close, uh, and it was a bit unconventional. Uh, Chip and I got to know each other because Coles was one of the biggest retailers, is one of the biggest retailers of Levi. So we got to know each other, then worked very closely together. I think we instantly connected. We both started our careers at P&G, so we think we have a little bit of that same wiring, but I think it's just, as leaders as human beings, um, we're both very values-based and, and think a lot alike. So we had connected in those early days, and then uh, as we all navigated the pandemic, and as you well know, and you brought the CEO community together, uh, Chip and I in particular, uh, our bond only grew deeper, and I think I was speaking to him practically every week, so I really got to know him. So I guess fast forward, uh, fall of 2022, and I think he's thinking about maybe what's next for him, and uh, he thought of me, he called me, and like I said, it was, it was a call that I couldn't pass up. And you know, we were public about uh, this is gonna be a CEO transition, and we wanted to take the time. You know, the board, the family, shareholders, the company was really important. Um, you know, Levi's has a 170 year legacy, like, they can't screw that up, right? <laughs> and so, um, so a year for me to really get to know the business, the culture, and importantly, the team. And so, uh, to your other question, I mean, I feel like all of my experience is on now, 33 years, hard to believe, between starting the career at P&G, spending almost 17 years at Starbucks, 10 years at Kohl's, and now here. I feel like being here at this moment is the, the culmination of everything I've done. And I would say, if you aggregate it, I, I take it to sort of five key learnings. Um, number one is the importance and power of brands. As you said, Chip is a brand guy. I grew up from Procter & Gamble, the place where you learn brands. And you never forget, like, the brand is one of your most important assets. And if you don't have a strong brand, like the rest of it is going to be really, really tough. Number one. Number two, along with that, is you always have to be obsessed about the consumer. Consumer at the center of everything. I know a lot of companies say that. You got to really mean it. Uh, three, the importance and the power of innovation. And we can talk about that. But I, I feel like during my 17 years at Starbucks, that's really where I got to learn from some of the most brilliant entrepreneurs of our time, and then also got to build those muscles. And um, I could tell you lots of stories. A fun one, 
um, just because it is the 20th anniversary of the pumpkin spice, pumpkin spice latte, or as they now call it, the PSL. Is, you know, that was an example, like nobody was in a focus group saying, hey, can you create a pumpkin spice latte for me, right? But what innovation is, is like looking around corners, thinking about things consumers don't know they need, and um, even when we did consumer testing, it didn't test that well. But we knew there was something really special there, and that's where you link the brand, like, let's make consumers want that. And 20 years later, like, you know, there's a huge following. Uh, I think I could say the similar thing, bringing those skills over to Kohl's. And when we announced the partnership with Amazon, with Kohl's accepting Amazon returns, that was causing yeah. some heads to turn, um, but it ended up being a great move. Great for Kohl's, drives traffic, great for Amazon, seamless experience, that partnership continues on. Um, the fourth one is, I would say, I think everybody today needs to think like an omni-channel retailer. And uh, I really, you know, moving from Starbucks to Kohl's, um, being at that pivotal point, that's one of the things that attracted me to Kohl's is, you know, at that time, 2013, the industry was going through so much disruption. Kohl's was operating as a brick and mortar retailer. We had to rewire the company, um, on top of all the innovation, of course, but rewire the company to, to really operate as a best-in-class omnichannel retailer. And in comes a big e-com business. I started, it was less than a billion. I left, it was six billion. The list goes on. And then the last piece, and I'd say the most important, um, it's about purpose and values. And uh, I have been fortunate to have worked for really every company who operated as a purpose-driven company. It's how I'm wired. I love the phrase at Levi's, we talk about everything we do, it's driving profits through principles. Um, and they live it. And Chip has been a great ambassador. I will continue that um, because it's not about just serving the consumer. The consumer is important, but it's how you take care of your employees, especially in retail, your frontline employees, how you give back to the communities, um, your responsibility socially to the environment, the list goes on. So um, you learn a lot over 33 years math, but I am uh, beyond excited to now take all of this and to build on an incredibly strong foundation that Chip and the team have created um, and the growth they've created and take it to the next level. So, and I think that framework is really helpful to think about all those dimensions and, um, and they work especially well in retail because it is a consumer facing business. So the right. consumers, but you could apply that to other businesses as well and other segments of the economy and similar sort of framework. But a big piece of making this transition work, and, and you talked about this, was